All right, class. So today is going to be our last day covering new content for the class. We've got three weeks left in the semester, and the way it's going to work is this week we are going to learn about torque. Next week we're going to have a Zoom meeting Tuesday during our normal class time. So at 10 a.m. we're going to get together and have a review session. So in that review session, I'm going to make sure that you guys feel good about the content that's going to be on your third exam, which is going to be next week on Thursday, but I'm going to have it open up after our review session and you'll have the rest of the week to work on it. All right, so next week is going to be our review exam week. The following week after that is going to be the last week of classes and I'm going to use that as a work week for you to reach out to me if you have any questions because I'm going to give you your final once the exam is turned in for that uh, exam three. So your final exam is going to be comprehensive over the whole semester and it's going to sort of tie all these concepts together and kind of see how well you understood everything and how you can sort of apply it. So that final exam, you're going to have the last week of classes to look at it, work on it, ask me questions, and it's going to be due Tuesday at 10 a.m. So that's our normal uh, final time, May 5th, 10 a.m. That's when your final is due. All right, so that's what we've got for the rest of the semester. Today, we're going to start talking about torque. I'm not going to do a slideshow presentation on this. I just want us to get the basics of torque, all right? Um, chapter it was four or five in the book, whatever goes over torque, goes into some details that I don't think we really need to cover in this class. So we're going to cover the basics. I'm going to try to hit this um, as brief and to the point that I can. Make sure you let me know if you have any questions though. So we talked about torque a little bit already, knowing that it's a rotational force. All right, so our equation here, T stands for torque, which is our force about an axis or a turning force is equal to the force, so this is like the application force, which is a linear force, times R, which stands for the moment arm. Specifically, the moment arm is the perpendicular distance from the force to the axis of rotation. So if we look at this example here, we have our axis of rotation, our applied force, and then perpendicular off of the line of force is going to make our moment arm. So perpendicular straight across that distance is our moment arm. If we wanted to add some values to this and calculate what is the torque about this axis, we take force of 50 newtons, multiply it by this five meters of the moment arm, is gonna give us 250 newton meters. So torque, the quantity is newton meters. We can have newton centimeters, things like that, but for the sake of this class, let's just stick to newton meters. With torque, we have a couple different kinds of torque that act on the human body. So we have external torque. Let's pretend this example is somebody holding a dumbbell at the 90 degree position, all right, or as close to that 90 degree that I drew. We know that gravity is acting down on that dumbbell, so that is our force. So F of W, or force of the weight, going straight down through that dumbbell. The external torque acting on the elbow is going to be the force of the dumbbell times the moment arm, which is the distance from the force to the axis of rotation, because the elbow is what we're rotating about. So if we know force of the dumbbell is 30 newtons, the distance from the weight or the force of gravity to the elbow is 0.4 meters. We can multiply these and get our torque. Of 12 Newton meters. So that dumbbell is causing a rotational force about the elbow of 12 Newton meters. The other kind of torque that acts on the human body is internal torque. So this is the kind of torque that we produce with our muscles against the joint. So in order to counteract the weight of the dumbbell, our bicep needs to produce an internal torque inside of our body to hold that elbow in place, or to hold the arm in place. So our internal torque is going to be F of B, or it's going to involve F of B, which is the force of the bicep. Let's say we know where the insertion is of the bicep on the forearm, and that is 0 0.025 meters away from the axis of rotation or the elbow joint. 
Okay, so that bicep is 0 0.025 meters away from the elbow. I want to know how much force does that bicep need to exert in order to counterbalance the 12 newton meters of force that we experience from the dumbbell. The way that we can solve this is just with some basic algebra. All right, we've been doing this, solve for the unknown variable. We know that in order to produce equilibrium, the forces need to be balanced. So if we have a balanced internal and external torque acting on the elbow, the elbow will not be moving. So let's pretend we want the elbow just to be holding in a static position, holding that dumbbell. The dumbbell produces 12 newton meters of torque. So we have, we want 12 newton meters of torque coming from the bicep in order to balance it. So we've got 12 12 newton meters is equal to the force of the bicep times the moment arm of the bicep. Algebra, we divide, divide by the 0 0.025 meters, and then we find out the force of the bicep is equal to 480 newton meters. All right, so these are the two different types of torque that our body experiences external force acting on us, and then the internal torque that we produce with our muscles against our bones, all right? So torque occurs in the body, mostly around the joints. If we wanna talk about the movement of our body as a gross system, we can start referring to our center of mass, all right? But for the most part, let's just keep talking about torques about a joint. Your homework for this week is going to be a torque activity. It's a little bit confusing, so I'm gonna solve the first part for you, so that way you kind of get an understanding for it, and then the rest is gonna be on you. So for the homework assignment, it is saying that somebody is laying down on a table, face down, with their arm hanging off the table. So this is the head, this is the elbow, upper arm, lower arm, and this is the dumbbell that they're holding on to. The distance from the dumbbell to the elbow, 0.3 meters. The dumbbell is producing 50 newtons of force straight downward, right? That's gravity. And what the homework does is it places the elbow at some different angles. So maybe I can paint a picture for you here. So if they're laying face down on a table and they're holding a dumbbell this way. And then we are changing the angle like so. So in B, okay, the question says that they move the elbow joint negative 30 degrees from the horizontal. So they're going from 180 degrees to taking it negative 30 degrees. So now we've got a bend in the elbow. So as you can see by this picture, he's bending his elbow a little bit more downward. We go down 30 degrees, we still have 50 newtons of force acting down with the dumbbell. Now what we don't know to calculate the torque about the elbow is the moment arm. This one here, we can calculate the moment arm because we know perpendicular distance from this weight to the elbow is 0 0.3 meters. When we change the angle, we are gonna change that distance because remember, it is the perpendicular distance. So here to here, we change that angle. Now it is closer. We go to here, there is no distance because the force is acting straight through the axis. So when we change this, we are changing the distance of the moment arm. So in order to solve for what the moment arm is, we're just gonna draw it out like a triangle like we've been doing. Right here is our triangle. Pretend that this is the lower arm. So this is what we know. This is that 0 0.3 meters, the hypotenuse. 60 degrees here. And remember, we went down 30 degrees. All right, from here to here is 90. We went down 30, making it 60 degrees at the elbow. We want to solve for this distance here from the weight 
to the axis of rotation. So R is that perpendicular distance. We drew out that triangle, so we've got 60 degrees, the hypotenuse of 0 0.3 degrees. We want to solve what the opposite, so we'll use sine. Remember, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so the sine of 60 degrees is equal to the moment arm divided by 0 0.3 meters, giving us a moment arm of 0.26 meters. So notice this moment arm is smaller since we changed that angle, just like we said. Now we can solve for the torque at the elbow at that specific position, which gives us 13 Newton meters clockwise. All right, so for your problems, when it asks for what is the torque, I want you to denote whether it is clockwise or counterclockwise. We know that this dumbbell acting down is producing a clockwise torque about the elbow. Another question will ask, what is the force required by the extensor muscles? So, or what is the force, um, I believe it asked something about what is the force required by the muscles in order to counteract this. So we want to produce an extension moment, right? We want to extend the elbow to resist this force. And when we extend it, that is going to be in a counterclockwise. So the external torque is clockwise. The internal torque that we produce is going to produce a counterclockwise torque to counteract that force, okay? It's gonna be opposite. That's all I got for you on torque this week. We're not gonna get into crazy amounts of detail. Hopefully you understand these concepts here. If you don't, if something's confusing, make sure to email me, let me know. We can set up a meeting time if you want to individually. Otherwise, work through this worksheet. Let me know if you have any questions. And then next week we are reviewing on Zoom, Tuesday during normal class time. All right, that's all I got for you this week. Make sure to communicate with me if you got any questions. We're going to wrap up the semester strong.